you too. So now let's head to the market. Uh, the NGX is still in the red, closed in the red again last week. I think almost every day or perhaps one positive trade at the close, uh, at the end of the week. But I mean, by the time we look at the summary, we see that uh, we're still in the red, lost 2.71% off of the all share index at 99,539.75 equities cap. Well, should we celebrate 56 trillion now? Uh, since this is like a, a point for us, a resilient point for the market, being at uh, 56 trillion. Uh, for a bit of some time now. And when we look at the activity, the activity, well, uh, compared to the previous week, we, there were, it was green, volume was up, uh, uh, there you have it, volume was up uh, more than 41%, value also, as well as deals. Deals was at 44,915. That was also more than what we had in the previous week. We look at the sectors, uh, uh, we saw a lot of profit taking. Heavy profit taking. I think investors here now are moving to the fixed income market. I mean, I think rates in the fixed income market last week went up to about 26%. So who wants to miss out on that? <laughs> so banking dropped 0.99%. Consumer goods uh, was positive. Industrial goods, obviously in the red, more than 3% for the week. Insurance, positive. Oil and gas uh, finally found its voice and made it some positive movement last week and was up 5 point. To zero. Now let's talk to Peter Abe now. Peter Abe is a trader with IBTC Stock Brokers uh, to tell us what's going on behind the scene. Hi, Peter. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for having me. Good to have you, Peter. So it, it seems like uh, the market numbers these days tell us that investors, I mean, everybody's only loyal to their profits and nobody's loyal to any market because it seems that the stream is going from the NGX to the fixed income space as the yields increase. Yeah, you, you are caught right. Uh, good thing is that we are seeing uh, some uh, investors coming in into the equity market, so they are not taking everything out to uh, the fixed income alone. So, I mean, I said for uh, some uh, few names, uh, especially in the banks where we saw some uh, profit taking or some sell off on the back of the capitalization news, but uh, outside that, some consumer names, uh, even after uh, the end of closing last week, we just saw few uh, interest in the banks. Mm. So um, I noticed that the oil and gas had movement, but for a while we see it unchanged. So I was, I was calculating that with Dangote, you know, now supplying to local retailers and all of that, that that would have an effect on the oil and gas stocks. Uh, well, if, if you're going to look at the oil and gas names listed on the Nigerian exchange, we have the downstream, uh, those are the marketing, and then we have the upstream, those are the ones uh, producing the crude oil. So if they are going to, uh, I mean, impact on oil and gas, we, it's going to come from uh, the, those doing the marketing. So in the, in, in the likes of uh, Etana Hall, MRS, Con Hall, so those are the ones we are going to be seeing gains from. And I think we started seeing that, I think Etana gained it last week and a couple of other oil and gas as well. Mm. So for this week now, okay, well first, let me ask you about insurance. Um, we saw positive movement there uh, at the close of, of trade last week. But, I mean, a, a lot of times it seems overlooked. And then uh, what can we do to bring attention to this insurance? I guess the insurance companies themselves would have to do something about winning the trust of Nigerians to patronize them. And that could, you know, move value to the stocks. Uh, you are quite right. I, I think... Uh the way Nigeria is, uh, well, we believe in uh, some other insurance outside the conventional one, uh, which I think uh, the insurance companies also have to come in here to let them know that it's a win-win situation for everybody. Nobody prays for loss, but it's the reality of life, and we have to get insurance. So comp uh, insurance companies have to do it, as well as uh, uh, every religious uh, bodies, governments, everybody have to ensure that we come in. Uh, to, to, to help people see the benefits of insurance. They cover. It's, it's not nobody prays for it, but that's the reality. Yeah, we pray, but <laughs> life happens. And I guess the insurance company yeah. said they have to, um, you know, go out there to win the trust. But what are, what are the expectations 
uh, this week. Last week, we had a lot of penny stocks, you know, topping gainers and, and all of that. What do you see happening this week? Uh, well, the, the, the digital will still continue. And don't forget, we'll start seeing uh, the quarter one numbers uh, for 2024. Uh, Unilever released uh, their own. And we expect more. I think the, the deadline is still next week, the end of uh, April. They have one month after the quarter end. So uh, I think those numbers will also help to push activities in the market. So we expect uh, improved activities in the market overall. But, but do we still see investors reacting to numbers, results? We saw uh, Transcore, they did release their first quarter. I mean, did we see investors react to that? Well, I quite agree with you. Don't forget we have uh, more issues uh, outside the numbers. You mentioned the fixed income uh, giving a higher uh, yield. So, I mean, it's a concern. I mean, whoever is looking at the numbers, we also look at much more uh, in terms of their pockets, how they're going to gain looking at other markets. So, no, investors are still looking at numbers, but like I said, uh, so many other factors have to be considered while you're looking at these numbers and it will help you to shape your decision. Mm. So recapitalization is still, is still I mean, it, the story has not even started. But I know the CBN gave uh, uh, banks till the end of April. April is ending in a couple of days. Uh, do you see them revealing their plans you know, for the recapitalization? Do you that affecting the market, perhaps investors taking position ahead of the approach? Uh, well, I, I think it's just a normal thing, uh, being a corporate to review uh, what they are looking at. We have seen a couple of them already uh, telling the markets uh, the direction they are going. Uh, so I think uh, uh, some other banks released uh, uh, what, how much they are going to release, and by the means they are also going to re uh, raise all those funds. So I think it's just a normal thing as a corporate for the market to know how uh, they are going to raise their funds. But like uh, a typical investor, uh, well, it's, it, they are, they, the banks at the moment are really at their low level, if you ask me, compared to how we started or how they have traded. So it should be a good point for everyone to come in this moment, at this point. All right, Peter, thank you so much. Uh, Peter Abe is a trader with uh, Stambic Abitis Stockbrokers. Thank you so much for your views this morning. Thank you. All right, so that's it. Uh, perhaps you want to keep your ears really close to the ground uh, to see those plans from the banks and know if there's anyone that you want to be interested in. Or perhaps you just want to follow the yields and head to the fixed income market. The good thing is, uh, Peter had said, the liquidity is still within our economy. So that's the most important thing. But that's it uh, for Business Morning. 1 p.m., Laddie Williams will be here to give you 55-minute journey around the world of business. For now, let's head back to the Sunrise Daily Studios. Back to you guys.